Developed by Spike Chunsoft, the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon series has existed since 2006, primarily for the Nintendo DS series of handhelds. Whereas in the mainline series of Pokemon games you get to play as a trainer, these put you in control of the Pokemon themselves, teaming up to loot randomly generated dungeons. This latest release for the Nintendo Switch is a remake of the first games in the series, although the red and blue editions have been mashed together to make a single release. That still makes it the fourth Pokemon game to hit the Switch in less than two years. Nintendo are in serious danger of allowing franchise fatigue to set in. This is a pretty basic dungeon crawler that still manages to grab your attention by waving its adorable creatures at you, and it's all presented in a great hand-drawn style with pastel colours. As great as it is to look at, the moment you take control it becomes obvious it was developed for a handheld first and not the Switch, with its clunky movement animation and controls. It also feels like it's aimed at a much younger age bracket with none of the substance that Sword and Shield had. The story begins as you find yourself transformed into a Pokemon. After answering a series of questions, the game will determine which Pokemon you should be, although thankfully if you don't like the outcome you can try again before proceeding. You then get to choose your companion and together set off to form a brand new rescue team. To begin with you can only receive missions by visiting a bulletin board in the town post office. Delivering items and guiding others through the dungeons are frustratingly the only missions you can do in the first few hours, and their appeal fades quickly. Soon, as your team's name becomes more well known in the world, you'll start to receive missions in your mailbox. Rewards in the dungeons are numerous, and can also mean adding new members to your team regardless of completing jobs, or just exploring for your own curiosity. Every time you enter a dungeon the layout changes, randomly generating items and enemy Pokemon on each level. This was probably a design choice to keep the repetitive nature of the gameplay from getting stale, but it doesn't really work. Taking on job requests means multiple visits to the same location, and although the layouts are different, there isn't enough variety to make it feel fresh. In spite of this roguelike element, the game quickly becomes boring over prolonged periods of play. The typical rock paper scissors battle system of more traditional Pokemon games still exists, and you have the ability to link moves to create more powerful attacks, but this is all undone by including a button for random attack. It's not obvious that it's also a turn based system, and there is nothing to indicate whose turn is next, which for us meant just holding the A button for random attacks instead, rather than attempting anything more nuanced. The whole thing just feels messy, and visiting the dojo to level up your Pokemon isn't much better, as you just end up playing yet another dungeon. It's a shame as Rescue Team DX is good in short bursts, but it isn't long until frustration or worse sets in. It looks lovely at times, and it's always nice to meet new Pokemon and evolve your own, but that's simply not enough to keep you playing, especially when there are better Pokemon games sat right there on the shelf next to it. This may well be worth a play at a much cheaper price, but in this case Nintendo's magic trick of never lowering the price of their premium games means you could be waiting a while. Stick with the originals if you must play it, or at the very least, download the demo.